this is going to be an aqua 101 introduction to aqua uh, and i'm going to speak about everything uh, related to aqua but just little so uh, i won't go too deep but uh, if you're interested in anything we will either have uh, other talks later by alexey and mike or uh, we can discuss like anything so the agenda uh, first of all, I will tell about possibilities, what you can do with Aqua and uh, uh, for what purposes it was uh, designed and uh, like what, uh, what we had in mind uh, designing it. Then syntax basics, uh, what it looks like, what is special uh, in the language itself. Then compilation targets and uh, what it looks like when it's compiled uh where you can use it uh, what it requires from the peer a little bit uh, then performance considerations not strict estimations just reasoning about performance some reasoning about security and finally plans for the future of uh, aqua and i think that you can interrupt me if you if you need at any moment uh, if not, also okay. So, possibilities. Where Aqua fits? Uh, Aqua is made for uh, zero trust, coordinator free, distributed workflows. So, if the workflow is not distributed, uh, if you can uh, have a centralized uh, coordinator node, uh, if all peers are trusted, probably Aqua doesn't fit. But if you have these requirements, uh, I don't know any, any, any other solution, to be honest. Uh, if you know some, please tell me. Uh, so this is uh, the niche of Aqua. Aqua tries to move computations closer to data, so it uh, expresses where what should be executed. And it tries to minimize unnecessary round trips. So if you don't need a, a reply, you don't need a reply. Uh, if you can avoid some hops, then Aqua will try to help you with that. Uh, and uh, uh, with this, you can do um, distributed algorithms and think about distributed algorithms in two different layers. Uh, one is a low level, like protocols in uh, lib P2P meaning of the word, like DHT or uh, organize sub-networks or create a heterogeneous network with many different algorithms uh, working on, on the same time. That's basically about infrastructure. Uh, and uh, also, Aqua could be useful for uh, um, delivering user experiences, extracting the value from different uh, distributed algorithms, sub-networks, parts of heterogeneous network, uh, to provide the value for the user, like with uh, uh, Lambda or step functions. Uh, about, about the language. Design goals. Uh, first of all, uh, we want to focus on uh, execution flow. Uh, so we want to abstract out computations, delegate the computations to the hosts or to the peer um, so that uh, they can be implemented by some other tool approach, anything, virtual machine, uh, Docker container, anything like that. Then we want to express the distributed control flow. Uh, and uh, uh, this topic is quite general. Uh, and uh, I, I cannot list all the <laughs> distributed protocols uh, beforehand and say, these ones are good and we want them and all the others, we don't care. So uh, that's why we took uh, PyCalculus uh, as the foundation, because you can express anything with PyCalculus. And uh, Aqua, fundamentally, it's a syntax sugar uh, above uh, this PyCalculus-based uh, set of instructions. So everything should be doable. But for the language, we want to express them. So the syntax should allow it. Uh, and uh, we want to abstract algos out using some type definitions, like to say 
uh, we want to have a, a function that uh, provides us a subnetwork. Subnetwork is a function from string to a set of peers. And today we don't want to decide, we don't want to coin that this is the algorithm to select subnetworks. Anyone can decide. With this assumption, we have our part of the algorithm, which we want to distribute as a library and compose on demand. That's another goal. And for me, it's super important. I want to have fun. So uh, I like uh, languages like Elm and uh, Scala 3. It's not like Elm, not like Scala 3. I don't like Python, to be honest. So it looks like Python, but it shouldn't. Uh, so that's it. Uh, what, what it looks like uh, about data. So we have this computations, control flow, algorithms, and fun. Mm, maybe mixed. So about uh, the data. Uh, we decided to use uh, WebAssembly interface types uh, specification uh, to express computations. And uh, uh, that's why we took the basic definitions, the definitions of uh, basic types, primitive types from uh, WebAssembly interface types. Uh, so we have uh, structures, arrays, similar things. Uh, we can express them this way. And uh, uh, for uh, the services as a group of functions, we have service definition uh, with some inputs and outputs. And an arrow, this one. So that's about data. Uh, it's interop interoperable with uh, WebAssembly, uh, but also uh, with a relaxed type checking. Uh, you can use just JSON uh, with that and like call JavaScript or anything, anything else. Functions. Uh, the workflow, this distributed control flow, uh, is organized as in functions. We have function uh, type definition, which is basically some function name, arguments, and return type. Arguments could be data, and uh, they also could be an arrows. So here we have an arrow from two arguments to nothing. Uh, and uh, then we have indentation-based body of the function that looks somehow like this. In this case, we have uh, uh, this uh, round trip. We have the return type. And finally, we need to return something. So uh, you can omit the return type. Then you will have no uh, hops back to the initial peer to, to, to the requester. And, like remove this, this part. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can pass any any kind of arrow on the place of arrows. Uh, you can use uh, service calls uh, in place of arrows and all, all this stuff. Then uh, the special thing uh, for uh, distributed workflows is a uh, topology. So we have this on expression uh, with the block inside, and uh, uh, it basically says that all what's inside should be executed on this peer. Uh, so what, what, what would happen uh, with this block? Before the block, execution will be stopped. The package will be uh, serialized, sent on the wire to this peer. It will get it deserialized, uh, run ACVM, run these functions, and uh, then when the block ends, probably something else should happen. In this case, we have another on block. So uh, the topology will be inserted here automatically. And we have this on via uh, block to say that to get to this peer, you need to, to walk through, through another peer. So relaying uh, in Aqua is not a part of, of some fundamental protocol. It's just a part of a script. And you can use many relays if you want, just in the code. You can make them optional. You can have many, like, organize them as a chain. 
Uh, and uh, this topology will be capture it if you need it, uh, and you you just you just use it. Uh, another topic is parallelism. We have uh, some different uh, expressions for parallelism. Uh, one is par, which means that that this expression uh, must be done in parallel with uh, with that expression. We have co. Uh, that means that I just want to, to do this in parallel, in far and forget manner, and I don't have to wait to anything. Uh, and uh, uh, we have join expression uh, to wait for some data to be present, uh, so that uh, we can, in this case, we fork, and then, and then we join. Actually, uh, joining is done uh, simply by data using, yep. Um, does the fact that the first line doesn't have par mean that it finishes before, because I can't remember. Uh, yeah, why, why does the, the second line need par and the first one doesn't? Oh, well, because uh, that was derived from PyCalculus, uh, where you have one process, bar, and the second process. So this is one process, bar, and the second process. They are in parallel. Maybe this syntax is not perfect. If you, if you you have any other uh, ideas, uh, let's discuss it. So if there's like a third one, would you add par and then like C? And then, yeah, so every time you add another parallel, um, you would just add another par? Yeah. Oh. It's like a pipe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, one question. Do you have access to the context of your field? Meaning, because I saw that you say VA and like you point actual peers, mm -hmm. which means that you need some kind of drawing table in order to know how to ping those peers, right? Mm -hmm. But do you have access to the context? Meaning like, I, I may establish a set of connections, I and I don't want to mark a specific peer, but I want to say, hey, the first peer of my routing table, or like, hey, all my connections. Would that be possible to be described with the language? Yeah, um, so Aqua, uh, doesn't force any solution about how to choose the peer to run executions, to, to run computations for. If you have the routing table, uh, efficiently it's uh, data. If you have open connections, efficiently it's a state of the peer. You can provide this state or provide this data to Aqua using services. Okay, so I can provide the context of my peer, right? So when I load the, the Aqua, um, script or the, okay. when I want to execute, I can load it with the actual context. Yeah, you, you can both load information from peer to Aqua and use it there. Like mm -hmm. get all the routing table with weights and use the app to like visit every peer you want. Or you can do the vice versa. You can uh, get information somewhere and uh, move it to your peer so it uses this as a routing table or anything else. Okay, but that's not real time, right? Which means that as this script is executing, the context is not updated. Which means that with the routing tool, so let's think about, uh, for instance, I, am, I don't have you as a connection, I load my routing table, and then you appear as a connection in my peer, so there's no direct communication. You mean there, so, there are no events? Yeah, yeah so the, the VM is isolated, right? There's no real time events between the execution and the context where it's executed. Yeah, r right now there is no like e e event streams to Aqua from peer, but we're thinking about this. We have this notion of you can make it with polling. Yeah, you you can always make it okay. with, for polling. Obviously, you can like do a iteration that waits. Okay, so it's not completely isolated. So you would have some kind of like even when I have my my Aqua stream running, I would still be able to pull some data and like yeah, it, it's, update the input data. It's not isolated okay. at all. Okay. Like it, it's real time in the sense that you move computation to your peer and you do everything mm -hmm. you, you you want, but there are no like uh, right now there are, there is no syntax for receiving events from peers right away like from from operating system. But we're thinking about that. Okay, yeah, no, I, I was just wondering like how could you get because it feels that the language uses it a lot of the context because you're yeah. pointing to peers and like to the network events, mm -hmm. and I, I was just wondering how you could fit that. Yeah, and you can even command peer to connect to someone. Like we have an API that basically calls Rust to the PTP under it. Yeah, because I guess that this under the hood when it's excuse, it contacts like 
Yeah, but you can't direct it yeah, explicitly, right. but you can as well make it explicit. Okay. Okay. So it, it could be done somehow like this. Uh, you have a function, the workflow that you're going to run. And uh, as the first line, you are calling the local service, the local function, to read a list of peers as a value. Then you take uh, like the first peer, for example, move execution here and do something. This peer ID is uh, uh, the data. It's, it's a value. You can just, just, just use it in a variable. Uh, and uh, in this case, you can also say like next uh, pure, uh, I don't know, uh, pure ID. And uh, here you can say next pure. And in this case, you abstracted out how exactly you, you get to the next peer, just somehow, but it will be executed. You can provide some service to it. You can do it uh, using streaming under the hood, uh, with joins, parallel, whatever. Local, not local, <laughs> doesn't matter. So it's scriptable. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, you can have uh, some context of the request but to get to the context of the peer uh, where you currently are, uh, usually you need to uh, call some function uh, of the service to read the data, to bring this data into Aqua and to use it. Um, the next concept is loops. We have four loop uh, and we have three different types of four actually. Is four, uh, sequential four, that waits for execution uh, and then goes to the next one if there was no errors. Uh, we have four par that uh, runs execution of all the branches in parallel. Uh, and we have four try that uh, iterates until the first uh, cycle yields something. Uh, so in this case, uh, we take all the peers and uh, uh, do, do the calculations on, in, in parallel. And uh, for, uh, for loops, uh, there is a, another super important concept. It's the stream. Yeah, it denotes uh, the stream and the stream is uh, uh, the value type that you can use uh, several times to write to it. Uh, it's an uh, append only CRDT uh, data structure. Uh, it has a subjectively, subjectively stable order, uh, which means that if there are two peers and uh, one peer writes to the stream and another one writes to the stream, they have no clue about uh, each other. And uh, uh, the first one will have uh, uh, value a in the stream and it will be the first the head of the stream another one will have uh, the value b and if they eventually exchange uh, the messages uh, then the first one will have uh, the stream a and then b and the second one one will have b and then a so that the head of stream is uh, stable and uh, uh, the peer can uh, do some logic on, on top of that uh, like take the first element or, or do something like that. If uh, you need uh, uh, to stabilize the stream for everyone, there is a special operation named canonicalization that fixes the order as it was seen by some peer. Uh, writing to a stream does make a copy of data. Uh, all other writes making the copy uh, for other service function calls. And uh, you can loop over a stream uh, doing map. And uh, it could be done in parallel as well. So you can uh, react on new data using for loop uh, on uh, top of uh, the stream variable. And you can write to this stream variable 
from the inside of the for loop as well, uh, hint back pressure and all, all, all this stuff. So this concept is super powerful. Um, only streams can escape the for loop. So the namespace uh, inside the for loop is isolated. You cannot use these variables outside because uh, it's not clear which one you want to use. So only, only the streams uh, can be used. So that was uh, the very brief overview of the syntax. Uh, Mike will have an in-depth uh, talk about uh, how it works actually under the hood. There are many details and we can get to the compilation. But uh, if you have the feeling that there is such a data structure, it's awesome, it's writable, it's uh, sorted, uh, it is efficient, that's, that's enough, that's awesome. So about compilation, uh, Aqua is a more or less rich language, um, but it compiles to something like, like this. It's called EAR, Aqua Intermediate Representation. This is uh, derived from PyCalculus. It has uh, some branching operations, uh, XOR, sequential, parallel. We don't have parallel here. XOR for branches. Only one operation to get from AquaVM to the host. Uh, it's call. And uh, looks looks like this. Uh, if you need to debug Aqua, uh, probably you will need to take a look on this to understand what exactly happens. But if you want to write scripts, then writing this is super, super annoying, I would say. <laughs> Uh, the most interesting thing right now is uh, the call instruction, uh, which looks like this. It has the peer ID where it executes, then a tuple of service ID and the function name, then some list of arguments, might be empty. And if we want to use uh, the value from the service uh, and spend some uh, space in the data for the value, uh, we can export the results in some in some variable. So call is the only instruction that moves an execution to the peer. So when you when the AquaVM see the call instruction and uh, the peer ID differs, uh, then it realizes that execution should move further. Mike will tell about that more. And when you are on the peer already. Uh, the peer needs to resolve the function using service ID and function name. Actually, it's just two strings. You can do anything with these two strings. Uh, they could be variables, as far as I remember, at least service ID definitely can. Function name probably also, also can, can be a variable. So it's quite flexible. Uh, and uh, uh, this means that to make any code callable by Aqua, a peer needs to dispatch the service ID and function name to, to that to that call to this function like. Uh, and uh, uh, probably Alexei will show something about how how it looks. Uh, about peer implementations. Actually, a peer implementation is uh, just th three things. I forgot to add a, a picture here. It's a lib P2P connection pool. It's a pool of AquaVM and uh, something to execute, uh, whatever you like. We have two implementations of uh, the peers. Uh, one is in JavaScript and TypeScript. And for JavaScript and TypeScript, uh, Aqua workflows looks like a well-typed asynchronous functions. So you write code in Aqua, compile it, and this just async func with all, all the types, with uh, the promise as the return value, if you if you want it. If you want to uh, provide some callbacks uh, inside uh, the function, you just use JavaScript callbacks. But actually, all of them are mapped to the service calls and, and so on. Uh, if you want to provide, uh, to show, expose some code uh, to JavaScript peer, you use, uh, you just create a JavaScript or TypeScript object you also have type definitions for that uh, generated Alexei also. 
for the Rust, we don't have, as far as I know, <laughs> client implementation. Uh, it's only server. And uh, uh, the easiest way uh, to provide the code using Rust is to register services using Marine WebAssembly. But you also can uh, uh, expose uh, native Rust uh, as well. If you want to, to know how, ask us, please. And uh, also you can uh, uh, use Aqua just with Aqua using Aqua CLI. Uh, oh, I forgot to, to, to put the line about how to install it. So um, it uh, works not very fast. It could take a couple of seconds uh, for the request. That's because every time it prepares the compiler, compiles Aqua to ear, connects to, via lib P2P to the network, makes the request. So it takes takes time, and if you want to have something more optimal, probably you don't want to use like this CLI compiler, uh, but you want to compile to JavaScript or something like that and use the compiled code. I don't have time. I'm uh, like I'm running out of time, so, but I still have some bullet points. Performance, just considerations, nothing, nothing strict. Uh, topology, hops, network hops take time. So you need to be careful about the network hops. Uh, and uh, uh, if you have any parallel branches of code, uh, then it's not always necessary uh, to make hops back from like to, to, to get the response from the parallel branch. Uh, Aqua compiler works as far and forget by default. No acknowledges, no responses. If you want to have an acknowledge, a response, uh, if you want to add uh, this uh, this hops, uh, you need to use some data from this parallel branch. So uh, this uh, join behavior must be explicit. You, you need to show that you care about something uh, from this uh, this branch but actually aqua does almost nothing about the topology it depends on the algorithm if you do a stupid algorithm uh, performance will be buried if you do something fancy it will be awesome verification uh, every time the request is organized into a, a smart package that we call particle uh, it has two parts. One is immutable. Uh, it's the code and some headers like signatures, uh, particle ID and such stuff. And also we have data. Uh, every time the service call happens, uh, this data grows. Uh, so it grows like linearly with, uh, uh, during the execution. Every time when uh, the particle gets to uh, to the peer, all the code, all the ear code is replayed by Aqua VM from the very beginning uh, until uh, the calls with no results are found. So we have the verification of all the previous flow and we check that the right peers got the right data from the right sources, uh, provided the result, and this result wasn't checked, wasn't changed by anyone else, uh, so that we can have the ground. Uh, uh, under our feet when we uh, write the code, but it takes some some time. Then, as uh, execution trace grows, uh, and uh, we have like uh, bandwidth pressure, uh, the ear script and the header is always attached to the particle, uh, so it always uh, serialized to the wire, uh, sent, received, and so on. It could be optimized, but currently uh, it means that around one kilobyte is always added to every request. And the data grows while execution happens. We don't have garbage collection yet for the consumed data is planned, but not implemented. So it only grows. Uh, and also uh, if you need some uh, logic like uh, array sorting if you like do for example kademlia in aqua you need to reorder uh, the the list of uh, possible next peers uh, and it could be not efficient 
for the data because currently um, this reorder reordering, if it happens outside of ArcPM, it adds to the data. So yeah, and every response should be signed by the peer for tamper protection, which also consumes bandwidth. A lot of optimization could happen here, but not yet. And finally, the effect of the peer. Uh, performance depends on peer implementation details. Uh, and this is actually outside of Aqua, but uh, the experience depends uh, on this. Like what format is used for the wire? How exactly we serialize it? How exactly the call is done? Uh, the call, the like how exactly do you write to the socket, read from the socket, all this stuff, it matters. But it, Aqua has nothing to do with that. Uh, usually you need to optimize just one place when you where you send the particle and another place where you receive it uh, but that's outside of aqua service calls how exactly uh, the control passes the aqvm goes to the host goes back how exactly the call is dispatched by the peer uh, how the queues are organized on the peer it's also outside the aqvm uh, as yeah Every time data gets out from AquVM, deserialized, serialized, passed to like something happens, uh, it and it matters. And parallelism, we have local parallelism on a, on a single peer. You can uh, call uh, different services in parallel, uh, and uh, uh, then you have responses. And uh, there could be different strategies how you handle these responses, and it also has the effect on uh, performance. Yeah, what could be improved and uh, what we plan to improve? Uh, it's binary error. Currently, we send these strings. It uh, simplifies uh, debugging, but it's not very efficient. Uh, the data format uh, also should be changed. Currently, it's a serialized uh, JSON. Uh, might be something better. Uh, metadata caching. Uh, if we have evidence that uh, uh, the script uh, was already on some peer, we can skip this script uh, and use the hash of the script inside, instead of the script. So optimize this way. Uh, we plan to move more operations inside uh, ArcVM to make them uh, cheap uh, so that every peer can uh, reorder the stream, for example, to avoid copying the data, escaping the ArcVM, uh, checking the data, and, and so on. So it also makes sense. ArcVM and the WebAssembly interface types optimizations, garbage collection for consumed data, as we can track the last time when the data is needed uh, in the call instruction, we actually can garbage collect it, but currently we don't do it. A few words about security. Uh, just a few. Really a few. Signatures and uh, tetraplets, uh, proofs of data origin. So, okay, we have uh, the immutable part of the particle and it's signed by the initial peer, the one who sent the request. No zero knowledge uh, magic here yet, no privacy preserving protection and, and so on, unfortunately, um, but the, it is as it is. So, okay, we can check it. Uh, and then, we have the call instruction again and it has a peer id service id function name and some arguments what can we reason about the arguments at the moment when we execute this call instruction we can check the sources because the, the only way uh, how this variable prev in this case can uh, appear in uh, aqua uh, is by calling some other call instruction with some peer, service ID, and function name. And uh, uh, we can check that uh, this triplet is expected. And for example, if you have uh, an uh, authorization service uh, on the same peer, for example, uh, and uh, it uh, gives back two flags. One is uh, user authorized, and the second one is user is admin, for example. Uh, we can check that uh, the right part of the response data 
was passed to to the service. Uh, so finally, for this uh, argument, we have a tetraplet of the origin peer, origin service ID, origin function, and the field name. And all of this is checked with uh, uh, the signatures of the data of the response uh, by the, the, this peer and by uh, the getter that was executed by AquaVM. So this is what you can rely on. Uh, and usually it's enough. Uh, we decided not to make it uh, uh, recursive, so you cannot check the arguments of... Uh, but if you need arguments, you just pass it to the response, to something like that. So it's enough. Uh, and a service can add any logic to check it. Uh, pure selection. Uh, no decision in Aqua uh, about how to select peers, uh, but AquaVM uh, checks that uh, the data was uh, collected correctly. So we have some proposed solutions for peer selection, registry and trust graph. Both are opt-in and uh, beyond the scope of my talk. Uh, compute, react to events and so on. Um, how exactly we do compute? Uh, can we make HTTP hooks for uh, Aqua and do something like that? It's a topic on its own uh, and we have some proposed solutions. We have Marine as a WASM runtime for sandbox at execution and controlled effects. Hopefully Mike will tell about Marine tomorrow with a WebAssembly with a IPFS. Uh, and uh, uh, for uh, HTTP hooks and reaction on events. Uh, we have a, a draft project named Aqua Spells with some security considerations inside. So we'll tell nothing about that right now. A very important thing when uh, we design all this stuff is to forbid Aqua calls from Aqua to avoid amplification, amplifications. So if you can uh, have a detached aqua call triggered by aqua or if you can call aqua from the service which is called by aqua it's super easy uh, to create an infinite untraceable load on the network so uh, by any means we are trying to forbid uh, this until uh, uh, the peer is uh, super crazy and uh, uh, allows it explicitly especially uh, we are trying to avoid it. Uh, and uh, uh, we have a concept of distributed guess, probabilistic distributed guess uh, to prevent amplification attacks. Uh, and uh, that's thanks, thanks to the reasonability of ear uh, of this uh, very strict set of PyCalculus derived uh, instructions. So we can put an upper bound on the limit limit of uh, network hops, uh, service calls, and all other effects of execution, and use some heuristics for uh, accounting of uh, parallel branches, which we don't know what what exactly uh, happens inside. Uh, and uh, also, we have to limit number of cycles for every uh, for instruction, otherwise. Uh, it also could blow up. So it's not yet implemented. Uh, it's drafted, uh, planned, uh, subject for fur further research. Hope to make a different talk about that. Okay, now about plans. Aqua is unfinished. And I believe that nothing is finished until it ends. So that's fun that it's unfinished and uh, we have a lot, a lot of things uh, not decided, not resolved, not done, like open. And Aqua is actually made uh, very... Uh, it, we were inspired by Lippy2P design and approach. When you have small pieces, everything is composable, you can change, you can decide. So, first of all, we are thinking very seriously about IPLD because uh, uh, it's just slightly richer uh, than uh, uh, 
our implementation of WebAssembly interface types. Uh, and uh, it has Enum syntax. So probably we will implement it. Um, currently, we are thinking about that. Then uh, there, you can express almost everything with PyCalculus, uh, but uh, it's nice to have syntax sugar for common use cases. And we are thinking about supervising patterns like in uh, actor model or something like that, because if you have a workflow, uh, sometimes it's quite hard to understand was it successful or not? And how exactly to show was it successful or not? So we're, we are thinking about adding uh, invariants uh, that uh, this block of code is successful if this holds, it's in unsuccessful if, if uh, this holds. So that uh, the piping patterns were like railway, railroad, pattern of error management could be implemented. Um, and that's about error handling and the piping is about optimization as well and composability of the flows because currently it's one flow, then another, and they don't try to optimize themselves if they, they do something on the same set of peers, for example. Then uh, libraries usage is uh, not very handy currently. Uh, we don't have acid lib aqua uh, with uh, the default algorithms working on that right now. And we want more tooling. We have some tooling currently like IDE support for this code with the go to definition, syntax highlighting and something else. We have CLI, we have another CLI and so on. But the more the better and, and the better the better as well. And finally, uh, Right now, Aqua 101, check. Hands on Aqua by Alexei, something. Uh, Aqua VM in depth uh, by Mike. And uh, at the very end of our track, open discussion about Aqua, lib 2 p IPFS, and how, how all of this could play together. And we have Aqua book. Thank you. If any questions would be awesome. If not, let's give uh, the space to Alex. What do we have working? Can you describe a lot of things to yeah. be worked on? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> what's the capability? Yeah, what's the something that we have? Well, we have the language, uh, the compiler, we have uh, uh, integration with the uh, JavaScript, like that creates these things and uh, these things. We have import experts, we have uh, all the stack for Marine. I think that uh, Alexei will show it. Uh, why, why do you describe? Alexei, go and show. Yeah, we have a working peer-to-peer -peer network. When it all works, you can just program the CD algorithms and they work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, we have a lot. Yeah, we have a lot. <laughs> So not everything is just waving the hands, actually it's implemented.